Our first major conversation this morning is about the controversy surrounding the value added tax. We've seen a different opinion from different quarters. Some saying, you know, this would add value to the economy of states as an entity and would include, you know, fiscal federalism, devolution of powers, allow states to control their own resource and be good for the entire state as a whole. But other reports we've seen have, you know, debunked that notion, saying that actually most states would suffer um, than usual because of the value added tax and all the controversies surrounding the structure of how the tax should be collected. We're joined this morning to analyze these issues um, by a financial analyst, Mr. Shegun Shele. Good morning, Mr. Shele. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Shele, good morning. Can you hear us? All right. While we. Um try to connect with Shegun Shele. The conversation really is about, you know, uh, looking at the little details here and there with regards to Nigeria's taxation, uh, you know, system and seeing who exactly gets to benefit from uh, the value-added tax uh, debate. If, you know, eventually uh, courts give a go-ahead that states should start to collect their own taxation, how does it change a lot of things and details, you know, with states across the country? Okay. And also try to try and dispel that myth that this is a north versus south, you know, issue. Um, also, local governments and how they will be affected. Because if you look at, if you follow the conversation, states have also argued the percentage for local government should also re be reduced. And so um, there's a lot of details. What is the, you know, value added tax uh, derivation in different states and different regions across the country? Um, you will be shocked to find that there's a lot of states that are not in the north, you know, and I think I said this last week, there's a lot of states that are not in the north that also have very, very poor tax derivation, as mm -hmm. low as 0.07%, 0.06%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and how will they be affected uh, by this? Another very important, um, you know, detail is what should this teach states across Nigeria? Um, what should this teach state governors, you know, and, you know, their, their internally generated revenue drive? In what ways should they now start to think and look inward, uh, ways that they can generate revenue for themselves? In what ways can they create a better environment that will give them more taxable income, or give them more companies, more businesses, more personal income? Uh, that is state can tax. There's it's many, many of these details here and there uh, that are important and not, you know, just the argument over, you know, should it be you know, for the federal government, the FIRS or for, or for states. Um, and so that's, you know, most of the conversation that we'll be having this morning. I've, uh, a lot of times I've spoken about Nigeria's tax bracket and how I feel like the, the, the federal government itself needs to reorganize its taxation scheme. Um, in what ways can the Nigerian government maybe tap in more uh, from uh, taxation? Um, if for a lot of countries, there's, you know, you could you could look at you know the percentages of um, you know personal income tax that countries like the United States or in South Africa or in the UK get to earn from, and compare that with what we earn here in Nigeria. Should the Nigerian government be looking out for more ways to tax Nigerians, or should it be looking for more ways to or, or ways to incorporate more Nigerians in its uh, tax bracket? Because People would argue outrightly that there's many Nigerians who do not pay tax on a lot of things that they get to enjoy, benefits um, that they enjoy you know, from you know, the government and from the Nigerian state. Um, so how can the Nigerian government then you know, allow this go to states and let the uh, FIRS back off from this argument and then instead um, you know, find more ways to increase you know, the number of Nigerians on their tax bracket, number of companies and all that, all that in their tax bracket. Uh, Shegun Shele, good morning once again. Yeah, good morning. Well done. All right. Good morning, Mr. Shelley. Hello. Yes, can you hear us now? Yes, better now. Okay, so for people who do not understand um, what exactly the conversation is regarding this VAT, I want just to start from the basics and explain what exactly is VAT. Because I've had people even ask me personally, say, what exactly is this VAT all about? And I had to take my time to explain. So please explain to Nigerians what, ex what exactly is value-added tax and what is the current structure of how it's collected. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think I can get some feedback noise from your end, but let me just try as much to respond to most of the questions. Now, value-added tax, VAT for short, is a type of consumption tax. It is an indirect tax because of the person who bears the incidence of the tax. 
is not the one that is directly paying over to the relevant authority. Now, it is also a multi-stage kind of path. So that is why you hear people talk about input, VAT, and output VAT. Now, every time, every taxable person gets into a consumption of taxable goods or taxable services, then the person invariably is paying from the levy as part to the government. Now, government in this way is the federal government through the Federal Inland Revenue Service as stated in the VAT law, as the VAT Act, the Value Added Tax Act 2004 as amended. Now, VAT, in the course of its, um, um, its promulgation, the VAT Act in, in the course of its promulgation, actually came to annul or repeal what we know as the sale tax, which is that too has been what people are paying on goods they consume and services that they enjoy. So when that came into be, there were specific classes of goods and services that were exempted from, from, from the VAT um, um, calculation. You know, there is a long list of these items in the in the VAT law. Some of which include medical and pharmaceutical products, basic food items, books and educational materials, baby products, fertilizers and locally produced, agricultural, veterinary medicines, or exports, um, and all that, all that. Quite a handful of them, of course. And then for services, there are medical services. Services rendered by community banks, people's banks, and the mortgage institutions, plays and performances by educational institutions as part of learning are these services which have been exempted from VAT. By the advent of the Internet Act of 2000, which was promulgated, no, 2019, we also had companies that is regarded as small companies getting exempt status. This exemption status is granted them if at all that turnover in any one year is less than 25 million naira. Then they are not under any obligation to pay back. Now every taxable person who sells goods and services and charges VAT must have incurred some bit of VAT before getting to the point where it's due to service is being passed on or being delivered as supplies to the consumer, to the end user. So that is where we now say the issues back that this individual has paid at the point of acquiring materials for production or goods for resale would be accounted for and deducted from the fact that he is now charging his or our customer at the point of sale. So where there is a net difference, that is that you have a much higher bad proportion of the output than the input, then the individual or the organization now has that value to be remitted to the FIRA, Federal right. Inner Revenue Service. Right, if it has a much higher input VAT than the output VAT, then the individual or the organization would claim a refund from the Federal Inner Revenue Service. And practically, that, that doesn't really happen. What you just do is to carry forward that text of your input VAT over the output VAT for a future date where you can now utilize it All right. in paying so, so of any amount that is supposed to be remittable by you to the Federal Union Government All right, Shagun Shala. Uh, so, 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 so we don't... Uh, kindly hold on. Um, Mr. Shala, can you hear us clearly? Sorry? Okay, just to confirm that you can hear us clearly. So, so, so we don't get too technical. Um, okay. You know, uh, what, what we're trying to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, speak mostly on this morning is um, who gets to gain and who gets to lose, you know, if this you know, goes or swings, you know, either way, either to the federal government or to the rivers and Lagos state governments. Um, hmm. So there's certain things that I want you to speak on. The Lagos state itself, 
um, has as high as 50% tax derivation, while there are states that you know, have as low as 0.06% or 0.07%, Zamfara or Shun State, for example. Um, so I want you to help understand why this is. Why does Lagos have that high um, or that level of uh, uh, tax derivation and other states are barely even meeting up? Okay, that's a very good question. You know, the, the concept of derivation, easily as it connotes, is which is bringing in so much more than the others. Yes. Would have the capacity to earn more than the others. Now, in the vast pool, that's the totality of the vast amount that is collected all over the Federation, Lagos State brings in a higher proportion of this value than most of the other states. In fact, it is said that between Lagos and River State, we are having a total contribution pool from the two of them as much as 70%. Now, if we take in the Federation, out of the 36 states on the SPC, the Federal Capital Territory, will go ahead and contribute this much over a period. And then by the time the distribution of the vast pool is made to the relevant years of government, the federal, the state, all together, and even all the 774 local government applicants, then the proportion of what is collectible within the territories of this state is not comparable to what we eventually get at the point of this distribution. That has been the argument. Now, the federal government, through the Federal Allocation Accounts Committee, also, which is not specifically stated in the VAT law, decided to go with the derivation just as they do the petroleum products, that they give a 30% of the total of the petroleum product value to the state, the oil producing state. Also decided to use a 20% or total 20% of the value of the VAT collected in the pool to give to states that give a higher proportion of the value of the VAT that they have been able to generate from their locality first to them before the balance is now distributed to the remaining states, also using some other parameters that are also been defined. Yeah, but, but does, doesn't this, you know, paint a very clear picture of the failure of certain states? And, you know, and so if, if this eventually goes in favor of the Lagos and River State governments, um, what do these other states get to suffer? Yes, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a known fact. It obviously would be that some states will suffer. Their suffering is not because of those bad things, but the totality of their internally generated revenue yes. are quite low. Majority of as much as 30 states could actually go bankrupt if the bad legal trust between the Labor State government and the Labor State government with the federal revenue service eventually did the cost grant favor to the state. Now, states who are here are even less than 10% or just about 10% of the totality. In fact, that's even being the uh, cost. Let me say with 20%. Whose contributions, who rather, whose who's, who's, uh, total internal generator revenue is less than 20% of the federal allocation accounts from the fish care would really have you to stop not the fact in meeting up with the obligation. Now you rightly said it. Could it be that yes, these states have sat on the fence and they've not really pushed themselves high enough to improve their revenue generation potential? It's obvious, isn't it? Because everybody, when I say everybody, I mean all the states, either to the point now, have had to move inwards and look at how they can better their revenue generation potential and then improve on their revenue collection administrative processes to ensure that they can as much as possible survive without much of what will come from the federal force, which will be distributed month in month out. It is jokingly said that there are some states that are just an extension of Abuja. They run to Abuja every time to go get the allocation they need to be able to survive moving forward. So we can even very conclude that some of these states are not viable. So why create them in the first place? Hmm. You know, everything we do should not just be for the immediate, but it should be for the long, for the long run. You have a futuristic plan and a futuristic agenda. Yes. But the situation where these states were created for you, and these states now are all doing, most of them that collect tech, you and I know, collected bailouts, even from the government some couple of years back, 
are finding it now a big challenge to even pay back this money. Because it was not just a grant, it was a loan granted by the federal government. Mm-hmm. When they couldn't pay back, you heard sometime last year when the federal government through the CDS started a, 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 a withdrawal, a withdrawal at first before they give them the balance of what is now left from their past allocation. So which is tough. So one would expect that even now that there is a contention between who, who has the legal authority or the legal responsibility for collecting back, and many other revenue like that, that either so is being collected by the federal government, that even now the state jointly are now even having a voice in trying to reduce the and address the issue of fiscal federalism. Then there is a, I would have been, like I said, a, 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 a concerted effort being put up by most state governors and their government officials to sit down and start looking at areas where they can now tap in to earn or generate the needed resources with which to be able to keep running and functioning the SAT, the state that they, they, they manage. Hmm. Because so- it will come to a point where we will have humanitarian crisis. Some states are predominantly civil servant, economy driven states. If the government of those states don't pay salary pensions and give us the really contracts that they give out to some of their people, then there will not be enough money moving around those states for the people to be able to have a meaningful livelihood. All so right. there will be humanitarian crisis. Mr. Mr. Shelley, um we heard what you said regarding, you know, asking why were these states even created in the first place when we see that lots of them, you know, are not even economically viable. But we know that right now there's a proposal um, to create 20 more states in Nigeria. And, you know, in the heat of, you know, what we're seeing, the economic challenges of the country, we wonder how these states would survive. But how do you look at it as an economist? Do you, do you lean more to what you said earlier, that this will cause a humanitarian crisis? Or do you say this is actually what states need to sit up and make sure that they find ways to generate money for their states and be self-sustaining? Yes, yeah, like you like to say, I mean, um, the viability of the state wasn't considered. Now, every new agitation that you are getting, is not out of place when they can see that you can easily just sit back, hold your hands, cross your legs, at the end of the month, go to Abuja and collect whatever is due. So if 20 new states or even more states are, are, are created, what it simply means is that the current amount that is available to states like Delta, like Rivers, and even Lagos, the share of whatever they get right now will come down because we now have to give those states enough money, the new states that is, to survive. So it's about everybody milking the one single cow mm. that is available to the milk. So we will milk the cow to strangulation, the cow dies, and everybody will now go back and start thinking. The principle of invention, necessity, is the mother of invention, mm. like the Englishman thought will now come to play. So like you rightly said, if this will be what it will take for everybody to sit down and put their thinking happen, and start looking at ways to be able to better the lot of their populace, then maybe it's actually necessary. Mm-hmm. But it's because, you know, really, really, if you look at the figures, if you suppose it's properly, you will be shocked that even if the state, not just Lagos River, not Oyoyo that is concentrated, not Jetta that is looking over, looking, look, looking uh, over, over his shoulders look, to watch what is going to happen at the end of the day, or Cross River that is already making effort, if all these states, the 36 states and even the FTC, eventually get the pronouncement. If this case drives on and drives as far as the Supreme Court, and you now have the Supreme Court given the judgment because it's a constitutional matter. And by the interpretation of the Constitution, except something drastically happens between now and when the Supreme Court has reasons to be able to adjudicate on this matter, you will be shocked that the federal government, federal government, will not lose anything. It will rather even gain. It will gain more. That's the truth. FCT will gain more. Because even as it is, the proportion of the contributions from the, the, the FCT in VAT is higher next to, 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 to real estate, no, to legacy. It's as high as legacy. So if, if at all you are looking at who will gain, who will lose, federal government is the major gainer. Mm. Lagos and obviously, yes, rivers, FCT, have. Potential gainers as well. 
They, I call them potential because they are they, all of them three, three. They have actually not considered some of the challenges that are also involved in, 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 in revenue collection. There is an administrative process, an administrative cost which can be quite high, as high as 15 percent, if care is not taken. And then there is a challenge that you would have most of the people being on duty harassed by by such uh, police, if you would like, if you like to use such a police. Who will make life quite unbearable for the citizenry in the course of them wanting to collect as much revenue yeah, for the okay. good of government? Well, um, so a lot of these revenue south that they use in some states to collect revenue will be will go on, will go on the street for all. Yeah, and and, so and, and I believe that is, I believe that's one of the one of the fears, and it's one thing that I mentioned earlier that instead of increasing. Uh, you know, taxation. You, the government needs to find ways to imp increase the number of people in its tax bracket. Um, because I've, I've seen businesses complain, you know, that there's different little, little taxes here and there. And you can simply see that it is the state government really trying to mop up funds in one way or the other. Um, but I, I also want you to speak on dispelling this myth that it is a North versus South argument and that it is, you know, the northern states that will suffer the most. Is this true, Shegun Shele? Honestly, it's not about locality. Let's be, let's be, let's be two Nigerians that we are. It's not about locality. It's not about the north. It's not about the south. Don't you have states? Even within the southwest, where Lagos seems to be the, on some view that will suffer this. We have states like Ochun that will find it pretty difficult. Let's talk of a state like HTC that will find it very hard be able to survive. In the South East, there are states that work in June under the pain of not being able to continue to collect what they used to have. So it's not an isolated case that is enough that to have a bit of challenge. You know, and then, you know, it's also good to, to, to have comparative analysis in every argument. To look at the figures in all arguments. To be factual in all arguments. And let's drop all the politics and the politics. When argument is, is being reeled out, that uh, some section of the country consumes alcohol, they pay so much in VAT, and all that. You know, when you look at the proportion, the proportion of the VAT collection per industry sector, you will also be tough. Because those uh, the population are, are quite revealing. You will be shocked to know that professional services and telecom actually generate as much as 10.6% of the total VAT pool, followed by uh, other manufacturing services as much as 10.07, commercial and trading activities 5.06, and then jewelry, bottling, and beverages, this is it, all like compassing up to uh, frenzy drinks and the rest of them, bring 3.9% contribution into the pool. Now, isolate alcohol. Alcohol contributes under 3%. Under 3%. So why are there so much noise that is alcohol that is making bad stuff? of Let us not it. There is a whole lot of trading activity in Lagos. Lagos is the economic map center of this country. That is not perfect. You have the most of the oil companies having their stations, all the operations, offices, and the rest of them within the Niger Delta region. So is it, is it any news that they are also contributing this much? Mm. You know? So when, when we make so much uh, misjudgment, because what we try and say is on political uh, 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 below the belt, then all sorts of institutions, some that are not even real, are being advanced. And that is what is in the news there, and that is where everybody seems to be coming with the, the north versus the south. No, that is not it. Okay. There are predominantly states in the South here that will suffer the greater consequences of having this bad national pool idea mm. in taking away and giving it to the sub national sub region. Okay. By the time the sub national regions take over and by themselves start collecting bad, then most states will eventually suffer. Okay. I'm saying 30 states so, all over the nation. Mr. Shelley. Years of 30 states. Okay. I want us to talk about the challenges you know, that may likely come up, you know, if this swings the way Lagos and River State wanted to collect VAT um, for themselves. Um, we've seen, you know, opinion pieces saying that this would definitely 
um, bring up a challenge of revenue collection? How would states be able to collect this? Would they you know, have to now create their own internal mechanisms to collect it? Um, how are they going to deal with the leakages, the inefficiencies in this system? And would this lead to um, double taxation, over taxation? Would this lead to inflation, you know, increasing price of goods and services? As you know, it seems that the government wants to expand the tax bracket, increase the number of people that pay tax, and maybe even how much it is. So please help us talk about the challenges that might come up when states begin to you know, receive and collect taxes for themselves? Yeah, by the time the states by themselves start collecting this tax by themselves, I've already talked about the administrative bottleneck and the planning that will ensue. Already, I'm seeing a challenge. Everybody seems to be lapooning within the legal state government for having horribly passed the VAT law of legal state. The truth is, there was before the law was signed into a past rather than Thursday and eventually signed by the governor, I think on Friday. There was a town hall, there was a uh, presentation to the public by the Labour State House of Assembly for people to make comments. And so much comments, I believe, were advanced on suggestions on those that the, 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 the the tax population or the tax taxable person were, were showing great concerns about. So in less than 24 hours after this meeting was held, you have the law then passed. So sorry, what happened? Did these people walk all through the night and were able to satisfy themselves to have on knocked off all the agitations and the concerns of those who came to present the ideas so could it mean something else beyond? Because I just talked about even the input and the output. When the Federal Island Revenue Service came up with uh, the argument that for you to be able to effectively manage the VAT regime because of the input and the output content of how the VAT is that it's systemically structured, that is only a unit of government, a whole government, Federal at the, at the level of the federal government can be the one to be able to effectively run the system without a fault or a challenge being experienced in the course of the, uh, the administration of the VAT. Uh, they, they are not actually, they are not wrong. But the, the thing is, people should actually sit down and then without playing politics, without it, with it, without necessarily just looking at the money don't need to collect, but to carefully work the system. But of course, what would we say next? Don't worry, when we get there, we will learn the rope and then we will do what is right as we possess. Yes, it's also argumentative. It could be neither here nor there. But there will be increased cost on every state internal revenue service to be able to generate this much cost, this much revenue that they require to be able to effectively say, yes, this vaccine that we have not localized. Is working for us. So, Mr. Mr. Shagu Mr. Shala, you said that when we get there, we will learn the ropes. But what do states, especially states who seem, you know, to have a likelihood of losing out, what do they need to do to be able to pay salaries and meet up their obligations? No, if, if there is no revenue, you will not, you will not be seeing a aggressive revenue drive for most of these things. If it comes down to the fact that every state to now go ahead and generate its own IGL. VAT is no longer coming from the federal court. Get whatever you have at home and, and run your state. There will be aggressiveness. The issue of double taxation will become a free for all. Because these things will happen within the first few months, so that this state, especially the vulnerable states, will be able to access the VAT until they come to the point where they begin to find their laws and ensure that things are had to put their proper legal. For example, the two states, or rather the state, legal as a third state, that have gone ahead now to sign his law, has an existing law like a consumption tax. This consumption tax is being patronized against a group of uh, uh, people in the economic subset of legal, the hospitality group. They call it the hotel occupancy and restaurant consumption tax law of legal which targets 5% on every good or service that is being enjoyed by any taxable player, 
that I enjoy family food in a, in a hotel, in a restaurant, or in, a, in, in an event center. So this law has made even those who want these businesses, who will still pay VAT and will still pay the the, 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 the hospitality tax. It's already happening now. Isn't that double taxation in this case? But of course, when Lagos promulgated that law, it was consented up to the Supreme Court. And then the Supreme Court gave Lagos the judgment that yes, the state actually has such powers by the Constitution to go ahead and then institute such consumption tax. That it is actually under the purview of state independence to go ahead. And I think there are about one or two states, Edo State also has such a law. Yeah. I think Kano also has such a law. And I All think right. Delta as well, I'm not, I'm not too sure. All right, you, know, so also, you, you can see the consequence. So there will be many of thoughts that will come up. And so, then ultimately who will suffer? The people, the populace. Yes. But government will find a way to survive. Okay. Government will find a way to continue to exist. Government will find a way to at least continue running to the best of its ability until they can find a lasting solution, no matter how long it takes, they will continue to want to survive. And the populace will suffer.